If you're a machinist, chances are you know what it's like to have a customer or a boss breathing down your neck wanting a part finished right away. I understand where they're coming from. Time is money and a huge part of being a successful machinist is getting things done quickly and being efficient so you can make more money. But what does being efficient really mean? If you asked me that when I first started as a machinist, I probably would have told you it means rushing around the shop or trying to be really fast when setting up machines or tools. And I thought if I simply work faster, I'll be more efficient. Now that is somewhat true, and working with a sense of urgency does play a role, but I learned pretty quickly that there's much more to it than that. You can't just simply work fast and expect to compete. Being efficient means being strategic about your process and taking the time beforehand to give some thought as to what is the most efficient way to go about making something and then executing that strategy as fast as possible. If I'm physically working fast but my process is inefficient, it's not going to matter, I will still be losing. Early on in my career, I'd be shown how to do something, and from that point forward, that was how I did it every time. I didn't know any better, so I'd just do it the way I was told and try to do it as fast as possible. But I realized in some cases, if I spend a little more time looking at a part and analyzing what the absolute most efficient way to go about making it is, I might be able to minimize my setups or the number of tools used, and that would lead to less programming time, less run time, and all of that leads to increased efficiency. I personally have had days where I felt like I was flying around the shop, working hard, doing things fast, but then when the end of the shift came, I realized I actually didn't get as much accomplished as I felt like I did, because even though I was working hard, I wasn't working smart. The truth is, you can do things like set up your machine as fast as you possibly can before running a part, but it's not going to matter if you run your parts 50% slower than you could be, or if you approach a part in a way that requires an extra setup. You know, I had a baseball coach that would tell me baseball is 10% physical and 90% mental, and I feel like machining is the same way. I mean, sure, we have to set up machines and cut raw material, install vices and fixtures, and we should always work with a sense of urgency when doing those things. But at the end of the day, this is a mental game, and that's what I love about it. We get to use our mind to find the most efficient tool path, the best fixturing method, or the best layout of our shop to be as efficient as possible. If I set my material rack on one side of the shop and my saw on the other side, I can literally run when going from one to the other and I will still be slower than the guy that laid things out properly and put the two next to each other for the sake of efficiency. Now obviously that's an over-dramatization, but it paints a picture of a problem of wanting to be efficient but not understanding the things that actually impact your overall efficiency. 3D printing is an area where I think a lot of people don't understand the big picture and they get wrapped up in the print times and they're not thinking in terms of overall efficiency. I can understand why some of the print times seem insanely long, but let's break this down. Say you have a large batch of parts that you need to laser mark and you absolutely need a laser marking fixture. I can design one and send it to the printer to run unattended overnight and even if the print's 12 hours long, is that cheaper and more efficient than spending man hours having a guy program it, set it up, run it on a CNC for a simple laser fixture? I'll let you guys answer that. Or maybe your company doesn't work weekends. You can still start a 48 hour print on a Friday night and it would be done in time for Monday. The print's 48 hours which on its face seems inefficient, but if you weren't going to get anything done during that time anyway, then who cares how long the print is, it's still more efficient than having nothing running. I've also had bosses that preach about efficiency and then they say things like, I need you to work harder so we can be more efficient. The problem with that is, a lack of efficiency isn't always the result of not working hard. Some of those same bosses will refuse to buy that VeroS system that reduces setup times or refuse to set up a tool crib to help with organization. Barry's story of a boss recommending a chainsaw to cut foam comes to mind. If they would have cut that foam with that chainsaw instead of using the better method, which was a water jet, it wouldn't have mattered if they worked really hard. It still would have been less efficient and slower as a result of a poor process. But don't tell the boss that. To him, it has to be because someone isn't working hard. Now, I'm not saying it's easy or that the most efficient way is going to be obvious all the time, but understanding the things that truly impact efficiency and working hard to fine-tune those things is going to pay dividends, and it could be the difference between a six-figure salary and a five-figure salary. Let me know some of the things that have helped you become more efficient down in the comments. Our purpose is to serve you and to serve this industry, so I hope this video helps you analyze what truly impacts your overall efficiency, and I hope you go out there today and absolutely kill it for your family, your customers, the company you work for, or whoever else you serve. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.